Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks for our message this morning. The words of Jesus spoken to us from the gospel today. Jesus said to him, Go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and went on his way. These are the words of God that we will meditate upon this morning. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ. The writer to the Hebrews says this. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen. All three of our readings today come down to believing that which is not seen. Our Old Testament lesson today was about the literal six-day creation by God's powerful word of everything that is. There was no human being there to witness it because we were not made until the very end on the sixth day. And again, the writer to the Hebrews says, by faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. Now, apologetics and creation museums they are all well and good, but it still comes down to faith, to believing what God said he did instead of believing the lie that you are some kind of cosmic mistake. And then we have our epistle lesson, where St. Paul describes the whole armor of God to be used against and stand against the schemes of the devil. And he says that our great enemy is the devil and all of his unseen hordes. Again, I ask you to look around you this morning. You see anybody wearing armor? By the way, thank you, none of you wearing armor today or that would have messed up that whole line in this sermon. But honestly, you can't see that armor of God that you are wearing, but it makes it no less real. We might not be able to see the belt of truth or the breastplate of righteousness. We not, may not be able to feel or see the shoes of the readiness given by the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, or the helmet of salvation, but they are surely upon all of us today. Not only did we receive the role of Christ's righteousness at our baptism, which, by the way, you also cannot see, but we also received at our baptism that whole armor of God to protect us from Satan. And we have also been given the sword of the Spirit. Now that, I suppose, we can see, because it is the word of God which he has written down for us in Holy Scripture, which he has put into our hand and put into our hearts by faith. And not only that, against this great horde of unseen enemy, we have a great multitude of unseen ranks of God's holy angels. They're sent by him to protect us and keep us. How I wish I could be for you this morning, as Elisha was for his servant so long ago, to pray to God to open up your eyes so that you could see the mountain full of horses and chariots of fire. Those angels of God, the ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who inherit salvation. That's you. And that's me. But again, today we can't see any of that. But today is all about believing that which you do not see. We human beings by nature are doubters. If we can't see it, we find it hard to believe it. And that sinful lack of trust in God goes all the way back to the beginning. Instead of trusting God and His Word to care for them, Adam and Eve instead trusted that which they could see in front of them. And what was that? The devil and the fruit of temptation. And we have today the man in our gospel lesson. He asked Jesus to come to his town to heal his son. 
He wanted Jesus to come so that he could see Jesus do the work before he would believe. Up to this point, it seems all he could see about Jesus was that he was some kind of renowned healer. Not the truth that he was the Lamb of God who had been sent by God to free us from sin and death and hell. But Jesus, who could see into the heart, he knew this. For that is why he said, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. This is nothing new, because faithless people all throughout Scripture were always asking God for signs before they would believe. How many times in the Gospel do you hear people saying, Jesus, what sign will you show us that we will believe this? And this didn't seem to end there because we have St. Paul later writing, Jews demand signs and Greeks wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. And it's nothing that seems like it will ever come to an end. I mean, I want you to be honest here. Who of us have not asked God for a sign? Who of us hasn't asked God for a sign in the past before we would believe and move forward in faith? Give me a sign, God, and I'll be a pastor. Give me a sign, and I will go and serve your church. Give me a sign so that I will know that this disease or this problem in my life will be taken care of. God, give us an overwhelming surplus of giving before we will move out as a congregation in faith, trusting God's promises, demanding signs. Yet even with this rebuke from Jesus to the man, it seems like he couldn't give up his need to see before believing. For again, he says, Sir, come down before my child dies. So what will ever change this unbelief? What will bring this distraught father out of his need to see Jesus work before he will be satisfied? What is the only thing that will ever bring change to the stubborn and faithless heart? What is the only thing that will ever bring faith? The powerful word of God. The scripture itself says, faith comes from hearing. And hearing through the word of Christ. But to that man that day, Jesus speaks that word. And he speaks with that same unseen creative power with which he spoke along with the Father and the Holy Spirit at the creation of all things. God says, go. Your son will live. God had previously spoken through the prophet Isaiah, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty. It shall accomplish that which I purpose. It shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. So Jesus speaks to this father and he says, Go, your son will live. The word goes out from the mouth of God and it did not return empty. It accomplished its twofold purpose. To heal the child and much more importantly, to bring faith to his father and through his father to the whole household. It is the omnipotent power of God that has done this. How do I know that? Because the very next words that we hear after Jesus said, Go, your son will live, are these. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him. And he went on his way. He who had insisted before twice that Jesus come 
That he had to see Jesus work. Now, by the power of the word, believe. He believed to the point of going. Going on his way in faith that what Jesus said was. Without any more need to see, he knew that his son lives and would live. And that is always truly the advance of faith. When a person believes the simple word of God, even when there isn't the slightest evidence of fulfillment of that promise before the eye. The person leaves this font. They look no different to our eyes, do they? But by faith, we know that they are no longer dead in sin, that they are now alive in Christ because the Holy Spirit has given us the faith to believe what God says happens right here. God bespeaks us righteous, and we are, despite all of Satan's lying of supposed evidence to the contrary. Jesus says that this is his body and his blood, given and shed for you and for me for the forgiveness of our sins, and yet after consecration, it looks no different, it tastes no different than it did before. But by faith, we believe what Jesus says. This is my body. This is my blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of our sins. And we believe that we receive that forgiveness and grace and strength. And by that faith, it is received. And you are told to depart. To depart here in peace because your sins are forgiven. And honestly, you guys look no different on the way up than you do on the way back. At least not to our eyes. But I tell you what, you look completely different in the eyes of God because you leave here under His grace. And we look at a lifeless body of a brother or sister in Christ in a coffin. The world sees nothing but gloom and a corpse. By faith, we see a vessel that is housed the Holy Spirit of God. We see a body that will rise again on the last day in glory, sinless, never to die again, because the Word of God has spoken that truth. And by faith, we receive comfort and assurance. Once God speaks, once Faith is given through word and through sacrament. We are transformed. We no longer need to see to believe. No, now because we believe, we see. Martin Luther once said, Therefore, I have said that all else must be rejected, and one must cling to the word alone. For if we have taken hold of that, then let the world, death, sin, hell, and all misfortune, rage, and storm. But if you give up the word, then you're bound to destruction. So the Father went home. And the Father believed what Jesus had said. And the next day he he came across his servants who were heading on the way there. And you can only imagine maybe the dread, but also the hope that was in his heart as to what they had to say. And they gave him great news that the son was recovering. And he asked when. When did that happen? And they told him the time, and he knew that that was the exact moment when Jesus had said that his son would live. Now, rarely are we ever in this world going to get such concrete evidence of the fulfillment of God's word in our lives personally as that man did today. Normally, what we are going to receive is we're only going to hear the word instead of receiving that concrete affirmation. 
We're saving the word. It's what it's all about. Receiving the word is what gives you faith and grace and power. Receiving the word is what you are doing today. You are hearing this account of this miracle that happened some 2,000 years ago, and God is working through those words to put faith and confidence and grace into your heart right now. For no less real for us was it for that Father when we experienced the truth of Christ's words. That man found out in a concrete way the truth of God's promises. We know it just as surely as he did today. By God's grace, he was confirmed in his faith, reveling in the gift of his son's healing, realizing the even greater gift of faith that he had been given. And what do you think he did with that? He must have shared that word. Because it says, he himself believed, and his whole household. The only way his household would have believed would be if he had shared that truth that he had received as well. So my brothers and my sisters in Christ, be transformed. Believe so that you can see. Believe in the saving work that Jesus has done for you. Believe that you were a dead sinner, but you have been transformed into a living saint of God through word and sacrament by Jesus' death and resurrection for you. Believe. Believe in the unseen, for it is so much more and eternally real than anything you will ever see. And for that we can say in faith and with joy. Amen. Amen.